Welcome back, everybody. Here we are back in Steins Gate. Uh, a lot of serious things have happened in the past couple of episodes, and now we are greeted with this wonderful image. So uh, let's meet these two. I believe we've met every main character so far, except for one, which we are, which we see on our screen now. So I'm sure we'll get to know her. I opened the door to the May Queen plus Neon Squared Maid Cafe, and two familiar cat-eared girls greet me with smiles. Ah, okay. It's Okarin. One of them is Mayuri. But here she's called Mayushi Nyan Nyan. <laughs> Since she works here, I stop by about twice a month. I guess that would make me a regular customer. Actually, I've never been to any other maid cafe. Welcome back, Okarin. After bowing again, Mayuri gasps as if she thought of something. Hey, Okarin, Mayushi just noticed something. Welcome back, and Okarin go really well together. Whatever. <laughs> Kyoma, it's great that you came. <laughs> I'm not gonna do the sound effects. <laughs> the other maid who came to greet me is Ferris Nyan Nyan. Her professional name, of course, hits me with her trademark combo attack of cute cat-like gestures. She's May Queen Nyan's most popular maid. Even though she and Mayuri are about the same age, she looks and acts a bit younger, surprisingly. Daru Nyan's here too. He's been waiting. I'm not doing the nya nya. Daru frequents this cafe because he's got a crush on Ferris. He often reads her public mod while muttering, Ferris, you're so cute to himself. He's got it real bad. I keep telling him to choose either 2D or 3D, but he doesn't listen. I also have trouble dealing with this cat girl. She always finds a way to best me. Are you holding another secret meeting to overthrow the evil organization? Uh, yeah, something like that. Ferris wants to join too. No chance. The organization isn't threatened by cat-eared maids. Not true. Ferris has the perfect secret technique to help take them down. What? You finally mastered that secret technique? Yes. After completing my pilgrimage to the Guiana Highlands and overcoming my mentor's death, I finally mastered it. What mentor? Ferris knows my true name, Hoin Kyoma. I've also told her all about the organization. And now she's more into it than I am. She's always the one to bring up the subject whenever we meet. By the way, this is the first time I've heard of this secret technique, or whatever it is. So Ferris wants to participate in the Spirit Conference, like you promised. Ugh, she's not letting it go. It'll take 30 minutes if I play along with her. You're not suggesting we venture to the Sanctuary. The answer is no. Although you may understand the hidden secrets, you're still too inexperienced. But you promised! Are you going to betray me? <laughs> My brother is waiting for me there. Since when do you have a brother? And what the hell's the Spirit Conference anyway? Ferris looks at me with actual tears in her eyes. I falter, even though I know it's just one of her cutesy acts. Whenever I talk to her, I run out of comebacks, which is really unusual for me. And then she takes the initiative, leaving me nothing to do but listen to her fantasies. I mean, come on, you can only take it so far. There's a very clear difference between her stories and mine. As anyone can see, I speak nothing but the truth, while Ferris has only delusions and a made-up backstory. I always have to play along. That's why I feel like I can never best her. Uh, I don't quite get it, but can Mayushi go to the sanctuary too? Mayushi 
Great, now look who's joined in. It's just going to get worse from here. I have to end this conversation now. You can't come. This discussion is over. Aww. No fair, Kyoma. That's right, leaving my Yushi and Ferris Chan behind is mean. Who is Ferris? Ferris Chan is Ferris Chan, right? <laughs> God. <laughs> right? Mayuri and Ferris look at each other and smile. Is she talking about this Ferris? Is that her real name? Have I been mistaken all this time? That's a disturbing thought. Welcome! Mayushi has a hard time saying Ferris, so I call her Ferris-chan instead. Ah, so that's it. It's like we're in a girls' school. That's not too... tabby. Okay then, moving on. Show me the table already! How long do you want me to stand here waiting? Sorry! Table for two this way! Mayushi, I'll leave it to you. Leave it to me. If you hadn't noticed, the Cat Ear Girl maids here at my Queen Yan are required to add cat sounds, <laughs> nyas and nyans, to their words <laughs> with some frequency. <laughs> Mayuri takes my hand and leads me inside. Apparently, Mayushi Nyan Nyan is the only one who leads customers by hand like this. It probably comes naturally to her. She doesn't even realize the effect it has on her customers. And that's why she's second to Ferris in popularity at this maid cafe. She guides me to Daru's table. The tables are about 60% full. Among Akiba's maid cafes, Mi Queen Nya's popularity is solid but not booing. Considering what Ferris and the others are wearing, it's more like a cosplay cafe than a maid cafe. Furthermore, the cat ears in Nyan Nyanian <laughs> dialect makes it less accessible to low-level otaku and first-timers. On the other hand, those same cat ears are a topic of heated debate among die-hard May Cafe fans. Maids don't have cat ears. Cat ears plus maid equals two times moe. Oh boy. Those two- these two viewpoints clash. This place is one of the older maid cafes in Akibara, but it doesn't get much media exposure. Maybe that's what makes it more comfortable than most. At least, that's what Daru says. He talks about this stuff so much that it's been burned into my synopsis. Daru, Okarin is here. You're way late, seriously, man. Daru sits in front of me but doesn't look my way. He looks upset for some reason. So what were you just talking about with Ferris? I want details. He's jealous, that's what's happening. You really want to know? I don't think you'd understand it. Hell, even I didn't get most of it. Ah, the usual. Your conversations are too much for regular otaku. You guys exude an aura or something, you know? It's like you have your own reality marble. You know, I can't forgive you. I think Ferris Chan likes Okarin. Don't say that in front of Daru. All of the maids and masters here, the only one who can keep up with Ferris Chan is you, Okarin. I'm not even close to keeping up with her. I'm so jealous, you lucky bastard. <laughs> I have no interest in women who dress themselves in lies. Like you're one to talk. <laughs> it's already worth it. <laughs> uh, silence, you unfaithful bastard. All your 2D wives are crying. Oh, you struck a nerve, man. Daru theatrically grabs his chest and falls onto the table. 
I sip from one of the glasses of water that Mayuri brought to our table. Master, may I take your order? Omelette rice and hot coffee. Black. Coming right up. After taking Mayuri, Mayuri finds her way towards the counter as if swimming between the rows of tables. I hope she doesn't trip. So, what did you need? Daru asks without heading up from the table. That's right. In my confrontations with Shining Finger and Cat Girl, I have almost forgotten my original objective. I was gonna head to the lab in about an hour. I have an urgent matter to discuss. Top secret. I lean on the table and scan the area without moving my head. You remember John Cheater? John Titer? Who's that? The self-proclaimed time traveler who appeared on the internet about 10 years ago. I thought we talked about him before. Is this a new addition to your made-up backstory? It's, it's nothing like that. Everything I say is the truth. What a pain. Well, I guess I can play along. So, what's the source of this tighter guy being from the future? Wait, you've seriously never heard about him before? Seriously, bro, I haven't. Sure you didn't just forget? I can't say for sure. There are even books about him. I might remember if you show me one. You really don't remember. Memories fade. We're not computers, man. This is wrong. I remember talking to Daru about John Titer back in high school. It was only idle talk, so it's possible that Daru forgot about it. Daru is quite the internet addict, but the internet lets you choose what information you want to see. There's no guarantee Daru looked up info on John Titer. If he had, I doubt he would have forgotten so completely. Is it my memories that are mistaken, or everyone else's? Then what about the IBN 5100? Whoa, you know about that? Cool. So you know about it? It's the model IBN released back in 1975. Right, that's what John Titer said on At Channel. He traveled to 1975 first, obtained an IBM 5100, then leaped to 1998. What kind of computer is it? This stupidly expensive kind? Back when it came out, computers were so expensive that average people couldn't get their hands on them. It was full of proprietary IBM technology, and was a pretty powerful computer for its time. The six years later, in 1981, IBM launched the popular IBM PC series. Now that's more famous. Anyway, it's not like I'm an expert. This is just stuff I read on a wiki. Have you heard the urban legend that one there, there's one in Akiba? You bet I have. Just last month, there was a big talk about it on the net. Some ad channelists heard the rumors and went searching for it. My friend on Frippara, Sister Centipede, was the main person behind that. Even the legendary knight, knighted heart der Blitzer, oh man, German, that's, that's tough, <laughs> joined the fray, but they still couldn't find it. So, it was just a hoax? Who knows? There are tons of underground shops in Akiba. It wouldn't be strange if an IBM 5100 sun would turn up in a hole some in the wall. Let's see. My phone suddenly starts vibrating. Let's see what we got. You got mail. Shining finger. Interesting. I mailed you as soon as I could. My name is Kiryu Moaka. I'm a 20 year old freelance editor. I believe I mentioned I work part-time at Arcourt Rewrite. So, oh god, this is so annoying to read. Sorry for taking your picture. It wasn't on purpose. I needed some shots of Akibara for work, and you just happened to be in one. Actually, to tell you the truth, I was hoping to sneak some shots of the satellite. By the... By... 
By the way, the picture I took was just a test, not the final shot. That's why I was using my phone. Even if he hadn't begged me to delete it, I wouldn't have posted it. So don't worry. Oh boy, this took her about five seconds to write all this too. Anyway, I should get to the point. I'm really sorry for asking like it, like this, okabe -kun, but it would be super great if you could ask your friend, the super hacko, about the IBM 5100. I don't really know anything about computers, especially old computers. All I have to go on is that picture I showed you. I'll attach the image. Be absolutely positively sure to reply, okay? I'll be waiting. And if you could, I'd be super happy if you gave me your super hack of friends email address. I'll mail you again. It's okay to mail you again, right? Of course it is. Bye, Moaka. There's the picture, the horrible, horrible picture. Oh, come on. What's with this mail? Disregarding the weird timing. Is this really the gloomy, unsociable woman I met in front of Radicon? She's like a completely different person in this email. Does she just have split personalities or something? Hmm, well, I got some info about the IBM 5100, so I guess I should give her a reply. But if I send a message immediately, reply to a, if I send an immediate reply to a woman I just met, won't I come off as clingy and desperate? I, Hoin Kiyoma, will not be taken lightly. This is my chance to make her understand which one of us is the superior human being. And above all, I have yet to ascertain if she can be trusted. She might start harassing me if I ply the wrong way. And besides, she hasn't proven that she's not working for the organization. Nonetheless, it couldn't hurt to tell her what I learned from Daru. To discourage her, of course. Let's ignore it. This is out of kindness. Hmm. Sorry for the wait, Daru. So, there is one thing I need to know. I scan the area with my eyes once more, then I lean in close. The IBM 5100 has the power to destroy the world, right? <laughs> what? It doesn't have the power to do anything, let alone destroy the damn world. What's this? The world's gonna be destroyed? Ferris brings my omelette rice. She's doing her cat-like gestures while keeping her tray balanced on one hand. True feline agility. Despite her nyanyanian nonsense, Ferris is the consummate professional. Naster, thanks for waiting. Omelette rice. The cat girl puts the omelette on the rice on the table and then takes a bottle of ketchup from her apron pocket. She uses it to write the world's The World is Doomed in red letters upon the omelette's blank yellow canvas. <laughs> Please enjoy your meal before the world ends. <laughs> the world is doomed for the win! Ferris's handwriting is so cute it puts my omelette in danger too. Oh god, it appears the cuteness has shattered Daru's sanity. I give him a look that says calm down, but to no avail. I smooth out the ketchup with the bottom of my spoon, erasing the ketchup words. What a waste. I'm going to eat it either way. Darunan. Have you considered participating in the Ferris Cup? Yeah, of course I'm participating. Ferris Cup? What's that? I take a mouthful of omelette rice. Next Sunday, we're hosting a Rhinet tournament at the cafe. Ferris starts dancing in place. I'd prefer she not jump around like that when people are eating nearby. Ferris is the event organizer. It's all my idea. You can participate if you too, if, too, if you want, Kyoma. Entrance fee is 1,000 yen and includes a drink. Whoever beats Ferris gets to enjoy some of Ferris's home cooking. It'll never happen. Okarin sucks at Rhinet. Aw, but it's so fun. No, I'm fine. I stop shoveling the omelette rice into my mouth. Then I deliver a melancholy sigh. 
Rynet Access Battlers. Uh, whenever I hear that name, I remember the formal champion. Has it already been two years? No, it's nothing. Forget what I said. That sounded so serious. Who was the former champion? He probably doesn't exist. I mean, Rynet didn't even have official tournaments until about a year ago. Kyoma, you still can't forget him, can you? What? I remember that you and the champion, my brother, were such good friends, Kyoma. You were so close it made me jealous. Damn it, she took my story and ran with it again. I never even said anything about him being her brother. Hell, I don't know if Ferris even has siblings. I shouldn't have talked about this stuff in front of the Ferris. But it's time to let go of the past. Seize the day with your own paws. She shout resounds thoughts throughout the store. Her shout resounds throughout the store. Her finger snaps at me. Even though it's painful. No, because it's painful. I succeeded my brother's dying wish and perfected my skills as a Reinetter. Do you remember? He always used to say, Someday, let's bring peace to the world with Reinet. <laughs> Ferris, bring me my coffee. I present my empty plate to Ferris. I always eat quickly. It's a habit I picked up naturally during my years on the run from the organization. Screw the slow food trend. Sure thing. Just a moment. Ferris takes the dish and heads back to the counter. <sighs> if I'd let things go, if I'd left things going as they were, oops, <laughs> I wouldn't have had to. I wouldn't have had to play along for another ten minutes in her fantasy world. Ferris is one of the most skilled riders I know. Daro explains with a wry smile. She's going gone undefeated in over 400 unofficial matches. Is she Rixen Gracie? Daro ignores my perfect retort. It's sort of disappointing that Ferris doesn't go to official tournaments. She'd win if she did, no doubt. Why doesn't she? I'm sure it's for the customers. She probably doesn't want to in in inconvenience the store. Truly a model maid. Also, she's Mayushi Sage, so she probably has school, too. She doesn't want to inconvenience the store, yet she's hiding the holding the Ferris Cup here. That doesn't matter at all. The point is, Ferris is cute, and cuteness is justice. Cute catty and maze are sweet. If you know what I mean, that's all that matters, right? I don't. So in the end, do you bat for the 2D team or the 3D team? Oh god. I dare say I'm bi. <laughs> You're an inspiration, Daru. I know. I'm just too awesome. Daru usually doesn't show enthusiasm for anything. The exceptions are Moe and Ferris. I wish he were this passionate about, uh, about our experiments. Oh, we got some mail. From Ferris. You're more perceptive than I thought. So now you understand what's at stake. The Red Southern Cross will soon hatch. The time has come for Ferris to journey to the sanctuary and prepare for the... For... I can say no more. Wow, what an interesting, uh, <laughs> what an interesting text or email, I suppose. I had to pull Daro away from Ferris so we could return to the lab. We arrived to find it hotter than a sauna in hell. I quickly open the windows, letting a small breeze blow in. It won't be enough. I flip our fan to full power and place it on the table in front of me. I really wish we had an air conditioner. I turn on the computer. This is our PC for communal 
use among the lab members. It still uses an old CRT monitor, so it looks ancient. But don't let looks deceive you. Our computer wizard has scrounged up some parts and made some mods to it. In any case, I don't spend much time on it. I mostly use it to update the Future Gadget Laboratory's homepage, check my email, visit news sites, and browse that channel. I wonder if the new Titer is still posting. I see that everyone would like to know more about my time machine. I'm happy to explain. Just so you know, it's impossible to reproduce with current technology. Certain critical components don't exist until CERN embeds them in 2034. Time travel works by alternating gravity. Basically, you could think of it as using the twin paradox, but that alone isn't enough to reverse time. Still here, Faker? You're annoying. Go away. So your power is gravity controlled. Not bad, but still not enough for top tier power levels. The twin paradox, is that like the Urashima effect? That's just slowing down time, not reversing it. Who gives a shit about the time machine? Give me stock prices. <laughs> it uses Tipler cinder dolls and Kerr black holes, doesn't it? Just like you said 10 years ago. Oh, this is Halloween, yeah. And your time machine is a 1970s Chevy. I know all of it. Oh god, shut the fuck up, you disgusting chewy scum. Jesus. This is, like I said before, they really nailed the online interactions between anonymous people. The Twin Paradox uh, and the Urashima effect are different things. Time Traveler, John Titer. A Chevy's an American car, right? I'd rather go German with a BMW. <sighs> By Tipler cylinder cylinders, are you referring to the Typler machine? A Typler cylinder would have to be 10 kilometers in diameter, 1,000 kilometers long, have a mass equal to the sun, and revolve 250 times per second to become a time machine. How do you fit that onto a Chevy? Even if you could, a Typler machine can't travel farther back in time than the moment of its creation. Enough of your delusions. At channel is not your blog. I want to hear from Titer. This is a surprise. Does this mean that people of this age already know about my time machine? Did you really encounter me 10 years ago? If so, then that must have been another world line. At least, I at least have not gone to the year 2000. In any case, the important point is that the rotating black hole has the same effect as a Typler cylinder. You can learn more about Kerr black holes by studying the Penrose diagram of Typler's calculations. My time machine works by generating a pair of Kerr black holes. In Japanese, please. <laughs> Titer came 10 years ago, source. What the hell? What WTF are Kerr black holes? Explain using boobies. Oh, erotic one. Oh, erotic one. I'll pay a thousand yen to ride your time machine, not a yen more. Source is Hoid Sans delusions, real deal. He didn't deny it. All aboard Hoid's crazy chain, prepare for train wreck. Kerr black hole time travel is theoretically possible, but one, how do you get black holes to spin? Don't tell me you wait until you find one spinning naturally, that's ridiculous. How do you pass through the singularity? There's no way a Chevy can withstand the pressure. Why the short explanations, John? You stupid, wanna die? Still no stock prices. So, I'll attempt to explain, I suppose, the Typler cylinder from, I don't remember what I was called, but I believe the Typler cylinder is basically, imagine just like a really long pole, like they said, like thousands of kilometers long, and it starts spinning at really fast speeds until the ends of it are spinning near the speed of light. And of course, as closer you get to the speed of light, time slows down, and that's you could consider traveling through time. But like the person said, you can't go back in time, you can just slow time down. So I'm not really sure. Uh, John Teeter hasn't really explained how that works yet. Anyways, uh, Hoeing, we're gonna go back to his rebuttal. This isn't a delusion. I know for a fact that Titer posted 10 years ago. There's even a book about it. Search the used bookstores if you don't believe me. His Chevy has gravity distortion using it. That's what he said 10 years ago. 
Yes, it does have a gravity distortion unit. My time machine is not perfect. It was built by a third party who reverse engineered CERN's design. The gravity distortion unit is a little unstable. First, the unit produces a micro singularity, then injects electrons into to induce rapid rotation. This generates a local gravity synth sine wave. As the time machine passes through the singularity, the gravity distortion unit regulates the pressure to ensure safe passage. I'm not a specialist, so I cannot explain the machine mechanics any further. Just let me say that Kerr black holes can be manufactured. I assume everyone are, everyone's aware of CERN's current experiments with black hole creation. TLDR STFU. Unstable. Sounds dangerous. Titer's black holes are gonna swallow the earth. He's not just a mass murderer, he's trying to wipe out the entire human race. Find his parents before it's too late. It's not what- it's not that you won't explain, it's just that you can't. How do you set the destination? The Earth's constantly moving, or didn't you know that? By the way, I propose teeter equals hoeing theory. <laughs> I set the destination with a VGL system. That's of the variable gravity lock. It functions by reading the local gravity of the destination and locking the typler sine wave onto that location. By locking onto Earth's gravity, it ensures that I don't end up floating in space. It uses four cesium clocks to make the calculations, so the margin of error is negligible. Halloween needs to shut up. I've never heard of any teeter from ten years ago. So the universe is deep in teeter's shit. <laughs> The same information was in the tier book. All you've done is post 10 year old copy pasta. Copy pasta? Anyone could do that. How do I know you're the rear tighter? John Tan so moe. <laughs> My waifu. I'd recognize different opinions. I'm feeling more and more disappointed. Still nothing concrete. Nice try, I guess, but I won't be fooled. Whoa, I shouldn't waste my all day on that channel. We have more important things to deal with, namely the phone wave. Name subject to change. We haven't experimented with it since yesterday. It's high time I figured out what's going on with that thing. Oops. Earlier I asked Daru to connect the phone wave to the computer. He just finished setting it up yesterday and now he's about to do the quick wire work in the development room. Hey, Duro, what's with the X68000? I mean, it's a 20-year-old machine with specs lower than my cell phone. It's cool, duh. So, it's like the reason why some protagonists are eyed-eyed, even though they're Japanese? Not getting you, bro. It's cool. If it's cool, then it's cool. Anyway, there wasn't much of an option. This was the only PC we weren't using. What about your new one? No way. We don't know what could happen when it's connected to your crazy machine. It could kill the performance. Selfish bastard. Besides, we made the phone wave together. It's our crazy machine. Anyway, did you do any research on the jellification? Yeah, at the university this morning. Why would a banana jellify? What kind of science are we dealing with here? I examined a sample under the microscope and found it was shredded at the molecular level. Shredded? It's not a mere phase transition. The banana became something entirely different. Could it have rotted? Nah, there's no way two minutes in the microwave could do that. Then I remembered about fractal structures. The Menger sponge thing? Yeah, it looked like something drilled holes into the banana, an infinite number of holes and a fractal pattern, right down to the nano level. Whoa, what could do something like that? I have one hypothesis. Adding a dramatic pause to build tension. Daru gulps, waiting for me to continue. It's the result of the microwave's electromagnetic waves. Incredible deduction. I don't know how he comes up with this stuff. 
What does that mean? If my guess is correct, then our phone wave has the potential to become a weapon of unprecedented destructive power. One that could change the face of war as we know it. I twist my lips into a maniacal grin. Then I whip out my phone and put it to my ear. It's me. We're proceeding to stage two of the plan. Soon they will learn. The judgment day is near. All shall be as Steins Gate wills. Resistance is futile. El, Sai, Kongru. <laughs> Quit talking to your imaginary friend. I'm done with the wiring. I want to explain that he's not imaginary, but revealing the identity of my contact would be a betrayal. The last thing I need is another enemy, especially one whose power and cunning rivals that of the organization. The phone wave is now an indecipherable mess of wires. All we did was hook up to a com to a computer, yet it turned out like something MacDiver <laughs> would put together. MacDiver, oh boy. I assume they mean MacGyver. But they can't use that because it's copyright? I don't know. Or maybe, uh, let's see, maybe it means something else so you can find out. Tips list? MacDiver. Popular TV drama. Yeah, okay. MacDiver. It's not. It's supposed to be MacGyver. But they, they've been changing the names of things around for some reason. I guess they don't want to get sued. You know, they probably wouldn't. <laughs> now that you can access... Now we can access the microwave's terminal mode and see exactly what's going on in its computer brain. Well, what's next? We have bananas. Just before I left Mayu Queen, May Queen Yan, Mayuri asked me to buy some bananas with her money. She's too nice for her own good, or maybe she didn't even consider what would happen. By now, you'd think she'd know that if I buy bananas, I'm going to do experiments on them. <laughs> and so, I put the entire bunch of bananas into the phone wave. You know, Mayushi's gonna cry if you use them all, right? Wasn't it her bunny? She donated that money to our research efforts. You don't have to use the whole thing. One is enough. One. Daru retrieves the bananas, peels one from the bunch, and sticks it back inside the phone wave. We'll never reshape the fabric of society as long as money dictates the limits of our science. You're the one who wants to reshape society, Okarin. He lost all enthusiasm the second we got back to the lab. What a fickle man. Come on, start the timer already. Right, now, where did I put my phone? Uh, open mailbox. Contacts. Phone wave. Call complete. Instant access. <laughs> the Mayushi guidance system. Yep. For example, yep. It's finally over. Entering 120. Complete. The turntable inside the phone wave begins to spin backwards. Two minutes is sure as long. It doesn't actually have to be two minutes. Mayuri had the timer set to two minutes when she first discovered the freezing function, or whatever it is, so we're just reproducing that. Naturally, we have to experiment with 60 seconds and 180 seconds too. If we start it shorter, the freezing could only go halfway, if at all. Conversely, getting it longer increases the effect. You know, if the microwave's emissions are doing it, then shouldn't our cells be getting jellified too? While still looking bored, Daru finally gets into the discussion at hand. Well, have you ever nuked yourself inside the phone wave? I can't even fit in there. Anyway, what's your source on the electromagnetic waves? If you must know, it's my mad scientist's intuition. Oh, so no facts. 
Edison once said, without 1% inspiration, 99% of perspiration is wasted. So inventors of the world, be inspired. End quote. Wasn't it genius is 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration? Sorry to disappoint, but in recent years it's become common knowledge that that is a misquote. <laughs> Edison said that, be inspired? Yes, be inspired, he said. I don't know if that was exactly what he said, but I'm sure it was something along those lines. At least that's what the wiki said. Therefore, as a genius mad scientist, I am always inspired. The phone wave rings. This is just going to jellify the banana like usual, isn't it? We need a new experiment. It feels like I wasted 120 seconds on nothing. Daru opens the phone wave, door, and peeks inside. What? what? He rubs his eyes, blinks several times, then resumes staring into the microwave. What are you doing? We, uh, it's... Gone. Gone? What's gone? The banana. What is he talking about? I push Daru aside and look into the phone wave. It's gone. There's nothing inside. The banana has vanished without a trace. After a short pause to collect myself, I whip out my phone and speak into the silence. It's me. Slight problem. We may have awakened something terrible. What do you mean something terrible? I ignore Daru's panicked cry. I'm surprised too. My heart's pounding, but I try to appear calm. I'm invoking Emergency Order 666. Activate the Cold Heart Protocol. What? What do you mean we need congr congressional approval? There's no time, you fool. Tokyo will be blasted to atoms. I put my phone away after the yelling. It, you should be an actor. Shut up, you Ferris stalker. Where do you hide? Where'd you hide the banana? Who's a stalker? The banana, where is it? Are you planning on becoming a street magician or something? You're the one who hid it, aren't you? Uncomfortable silence. I realize my throat is dry. Where the hell did it go? How should I know? Where did you go? Banana! Banana! I take the turntable out of the microwave, scour every nook and cranberry, but find neither peel, peel nor stem of the banana. So, so. Wait, I think I get it now. It's not an electromagnetic weapon, it's a teleportation device. What? Wait, that's absurd. How else could it have vanished? The microwave was closed. Uh... Maybe we should just calm down. Yeah, you're right. We each take a deep breath. Oh, I know. I'll eat one of the remaining bananas. That will calm me down. I reach for the bunch of bananas. What the? Impossible. Impossible. Not three minutes ago, Daru plucked a banana from the bunch and put it inside the phone wave. But now there's no sign of that banana was ever plucked. Instead, a single jellified banana has appeared among the regular bananas. Oh shit, what the hell's going on? Durham notices it too. He reaches out to touch it, but I quickly stop him. Wait, how many bananas are in the lab right now? Just these, I think. It's, is this gel banana attached to the same step as the banana you just picked? I don't know, man. I wasn't paying attention. 
It doesn't look like it was ever plucked. No cuts or anything. Aside from the jellification, it looks completely normal. D Daru, could this possibly be... The word I spoke impulsively a few seconds ago. I hesitated to speak it again. But I must. Because no matter how unbelievable it may be, we saw it with our own eyes. My head's full of question marks. I don't know how this happened, but if I were to explain it as I saw it, the banana that was inside the phone wave returned instantly to its bunch. In other words, a teleporter. We've invented a teleporter. I hear a girl's voice coming from the lounge. That looks like an interesting experiment. Who's there? My heart just skipped a beat. I turn towards a voice in surprise. And get pierced by a sharp stare. Impossible! What are you doing here? The 18 year old genius girl, a sadist who humiliates men in public, also known as the zombie. Makisei Kurusu. Nice exposition, bro. Who are you calling a zombie? What is the meaning of this? What is your purpose here? I'm here to see you, Okabe Rintoro-san. Or is it Hoin Kyoma-san? Wait, how the hell does she know my real name? I've never spoken it in front of her. I was right. You're one of the organization's top agents in Esper with superhuman powers. No wonder you rose from the dead. I'm not dead, alright. Please stop killing me off. Has she descend? Can you do something about this guy? You came at a bad time, Mackie say she. With Okarun freaking out like this. Daru doesn't seem phased by this girl's entrance. Why? Have you betrayed me, Daru? Calm down, man. Are you being blackmailed? Or did she seduce you? I glare at Kurisu. He's my right-hand man. How dare you? You've crossed the line, bitch. Get a hold of yourself. Kurisu's eyes flash dangerously, I think. Such intensity from an 18-year-old. Maybe she didn't resurrect after all. After her first death, maybe she's a robotic killing machine constructed to replace the dead Kurisu. Is that it? For now, I'll do as I'm told. Hashida-san gave me the address after yesterday's lecture. He also told me your name. That's all. The truth is... kind of a letdown. So you're here to see me, is that it? Yes. You claim to have seen me die. I came to see if that was the truth or just a pan pathetic excuse to grope me. I came for the answer. Now that she mentions it, she did treat me like I was a perv yesterday. Well, I suppose I should be grateful that she didn't call the cops on me after what I did. But what choice did I have? Anybody would react the same way if a dead person reappeared before them, right? But your current behavior is all the answer I need. It was all an act to grope me. My initial hypothesis was correct. Not so fast. There's more to this than you know. I must clear my name or I'll be labeled as a perv forever. Anyway, let's put that aside for now. Really? That's a relief. I was sure I was going to call the I was sure she was going to call the police. But that for now part bothers me. Kurisu enters the development room with a quick, confident stride. Even though she's only 18, she's got a decent figure and good posture. Not much in the chest, though. <laughs> Her presence seems to fill the cramped room, driving me and Daru into the corners. Can't she tell this area is off limits? I haven't properly introduced myself yet, have I? I'm Makisei Kurisu, pleased to meet you. She holds out her hand. What is she trying to do? Shoot lightning from her fingertips? 
You can't even shake hands. Are all Japanese men this difficult? Shake hands? This girl's genius asking for a handshake? We only met yesterday, and just moments ago she was on the verge of calling the cops. You're not Japanese? <laughs> I've lived in America for seven years. What about it? America? I looked down at her slender figure. Glossy, healthy fingernails. No unnecessary nail polish. I stare fixated. Slowly, I extend my hand, making sure to keep enough weight on my heels so that I can flee at a moment's notice. I lightly grab the tip of Kurtisu's index finger between my thumb and index finger, then instantly let go. What's your problem? I can feel your aura of malice. You must be a powerful kung fu master. Don't be ridiculous. Then you're a ninja. Give it a rest. Damn, she's completely cold. Her tone gets scary sometimes, too. If you grew up in America, shouldn't you say, ha ha ha, nice to meet you, with a smile across your whole face when asking for a handshake? No, wait. You should be asking for a hug, right? Perhaps that's too much to expect from a killing machine. What kind of stereotype is that? Kurosu sighs. She's not even looking at me. Instead, she's staring at the bananas next to the phone wave. The bananas which have just exhibited a most unusual phenomenon. One of the bunch, of the bunch, one has completely jellified. Fascinating. Kurosu brings her face closer to get a good look. Have any forceps? No. Oh. And then Kurisu stabs the gel gelatinous banana with her index finger. She buries her beautiful fingertip knuckle deep into slimy banana. What are you doing? That's precious data. It's squishy. Kurisu extracts her finger. Pieces of the gel cling to her fingertip. She puts that fingertip into her mouth without any hesitation. No taste. Gross. She says it with a straight face. You have quite the appetite, I see. A side effect of the resurrection, perhaps? If you're that hungry, I guess I could give you a banana or two. No thanks. Either way, those bananas are my Yushis. Come, don't be shy. This is an offering. Take it. As if... Who would eat some perv's banana? A perv's banana? Daru starts shaking as if he's been electrocuted. What? What's wrong? Eat a perv's banana? Squishy? Finger and mouth? Gross. With a sour expression. Looks like his cranial pervert processor is overclocked. Uh, can you say that one more time? With a more humiliated expression, if you please? Huh? Go on, say, who would eat some perv's banana? But if you could add an ah, uh, but it's so after that, it would be extra delicious. Uh, huh? <laughs> okay, she's finally realized what's happening. Suddenly, Kurusu's face turns bright red. Oh, Daro, you might be a worthless, disgusting perv, but let me say, well done, sir. Payback is sweet. Now to follow up for maximum combo. Let's show this conceited little girl how true adults fight. So Makise Kurusu, you just imagined something, didn't you? By all means, tell us what. Don't be shy. Why, you... Come on, say it, genius girl. What's the imagination of a genius like? I'd love to hear from you. You ass. Kurisu turns her back to us with perked shoulders. Looks like she's capable of expressing human emotion after all. That rules out robotic killing machine. Uh, I feel refreshed. 
I haven't felt this good in years. Way to go, Daru. That's my right-hand man. Always gets the job done. I get it. You're both pervs. Well, you could say that. Don't admit it, you idiot. I don't want to hear that from you. Okay. I came off as a little rude. I apologize. Kurusu sighs deeply and turns back to us. Her composure has already returned. I was only acting that way because you molested me, but I'll ignore that for now. I wish she would just stop saying for now. It's like she's gonna call the cops on me later. Please tell me what happened to this banana. I'd also like to hear about that. Kurusu glances at the phone wave. That microwave thing. That's top secret. The one thing I'm cleared to share with unauthorized individuals is that the name is the phone wave. Name subject to change? What's that about? Phone wave is weak. It needs a better name. I couldn't care less about its name. I'm afraid that's the only information you're cleared for. Hold on, Okarin. Maki says she might be able to explain what's going on. Hmm. Well, she is a genius. She would have to be. She would have to be to defeat my sharp wit. We can trust her intellect at least. But it's hard to stomach her attitude. Plus, she has danger written on her face. Not to mention, she's a little scary too. Then I get a great idea. That creepy grin. Are you thinking of perverted thoughts again? You said your name's Christina, right? Who the hell's Christina? I never said that. Christina sounds like the name of a Hollywood film star. It definitely has more flavor than her real name. If you wish to learn the secrets of this microwave, then you must meet my conditions. Which are... Condition 1, you must become a lab mem. Ramen? No, lab mem. Stupid. Short for laboratory member. You mean you want me to join your research team? I'm supposed to return to America in August. I'll have you sign a non-disclosure agreement so you won't betray our secrets. Break the agreement and I'll report your steamy perverted acts to Science Magazine. <laughs> You're a monster, Okarin. I'll take five copies. From the moment you become a lab mem to the moment you're of your departure, your brain shall be used for the benefit of our lab. You're so full of it. Let's see the contract then. What contract? This is a lab, not a corporation. I don't mind lending you my knowledge, but if there is no more but if there is more pervy nonsense involved, the answer is no. Don't worry, we don't bite. No more molestation? No, alright. You said there was a condition one, so there's gotta be a second one, right? It better not be the second condition is that you'll overlook all past acts of molestation I may or may not have committed. <laughs> Okarin, you're so petty. You're the pettiest person I've ever met. That's why we love you. That's why we admire you. Shut up, Daru. You have no right to talk. By the way, Daru's perverted acts aren't included. You two can work it out yourself. What the hell, man? Those are the conditions. If you can't accept them, then you must leave at once. <laughs> so what will it be? I don't think it's a bad deal at all. You mean for you. Kurusu puts her fingers to her brow and shakes her head in an exaggerated gesture. Jeez, I feel like I'm hypersecting Nor... 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 Let me pick my jaw up off the floor. Wow, let's take a look at that one. A neurotransmitter secret secreted in the brain. Proper name, neuropinephrine. Oh, secreted when in an excited emotional state. Okay, that makes more sense. 
I don't care about your dislocated jaw. Do you accept the conditions or not? Answer me, Christina. Stop adding Tina to my name. It's Kurisu. Kurisu looks up at the ceiling to calm herself down. Does everyone in America make such exaggerated gestures? Sooner or later, she'll say, damn, or oh my god, or motherfucker. <laughs> okay, I accept. <laughs> Good answer. From this moment forth, your lab mem number 004. Welcome, Christina. Codename, the zombie. I won't answer to either. Use my real name, Hoeing. We spend a minute staring each other down. Kurusu's the first to look away. She does so in a way that says good grief. You're such a child. You say something, genius perv girl? Come on, no more saying perv. I won't treat you like a perv either, so let's drop it already. As long as you understand. Now for the issue at hand. Daru, give Christina. No, Tina either. Give Chris Kuhn an explanation on our experiment so far. Alright, I think we've been going quite a while, so this is a good spot to start right before we show her what's going on. We're pro I, I have a terrible feeling that we're like close to like an end chapter, and it's gonna start the next episode like four sentences in and then go to a new chapter. But anyways, we've been going on pretty long, and I think this is a good enough spot to stop. We've got our new lab member, and I believe we've met all the characters now. Or at least all the major characters. There's a couple I can think of minor characters that are still there. But anyways, that doesn't matter. We'll we'll learn about all them later, and we'll learn about what happens next in our next episode. Anyways, let me know if you like this. Uh, we'll see you next time. And until then, goodbye.